Today, the rise of the Far East has created a new, but much more differentiated, global leadership. Mr. Rockefeller, you will never get your new world order. We're not your slaves. We are not your slaves. The other major change in international affairs is that for the first time in all of human history, mankind is politically awakened. That's a total new reality. Rockefeller, we know what you're doing. We know what you're doing to the world. Rockefeller, your new world order will never come in. You're running out of time. Scumbag, you've rushed it. You screwed up. You're not going to stop the Irish, Rockefeller, you scumbag. We are the Irish. Total new reality. It has not been so for most of human history until the last 100 years. And in the course of the last 100 years, the whole world has become politically awakened. And no matter where you go, politics is a matter of social engagement. And most people know what is generally going on, generally going on in the world, and are consciously aware of global iniquities, inequalities, lack of respect, exploitation. Mankind is now politically awakened and stirring. The combination of the two, a diversified global leadership, politically awakened masses, makes a much more difficult for any major power, including currently the leading world power, the United States. A new bill quietly introduced by Congress last week is causing quite a stir among civil liberties groups. The brainchild of Senators John McCain and Joe Lieberman. Uh, the bill would give the U.S. government the power to indefinitely detain terror suspects without charge or trial and to interrogate them for their quote-unquote intelligence value. And it doesn't make a distinction between U.S. citizens and non-citizens. So does this sound kind of scary to you? Well, joining us now to talk about that is uh, RT's Lucy Kavanoff. Uh, Lucy, hello. So some concerns. I mean, this is kind of a no-duh question, I guess, but there are some concerns, and, and, and what are the concerns here? Yeah, well, I mean, people see this as another, yet another example of overreaction by the government in the name of national security. I mean, the frightening thing about this legislation is that it effectively gives the U.S. military the right to detain American citizens in the name of national security with you know, absolutely no recourse to correct the situation if someone was, for example, detained in error. Um, you know, the the bill is worded so broadly that it basically could, you know, throw you or I or anyone into jail for being perceived as the war on terror. And it doesn't really set any limits in terms of who makes uh, the decision about that perception. Um, and so, you know, if say we speak out really strongly against the government and it's somehow perceived as being a threat to the United States, you know, we can see ourselves locked up, um, held by the military, interrogated, held indefinitely, and all without a basic right to, you know, an attorney or a public trial, etc. It also raised the, begs the question of what happens when you detain someone in error, and also what happens, you know, what mechanisms are in place to prevent this from being politically uh, used in, in a politicized sort of way. I mean, could we see this legislation used to stifle dissent? I mean, you know, Tea Partiers often say fairly critical things of the U.S. government. You know, in its extreme, could we see this legislation used as something to stifle that kind of dissent? What about 9-11 truthers? What about anti-war protesters? And so, you know, the question is limits and oversight. And this legislation, unfortunately, doesn't set any limits. And it doesn't really, uh, you know, allow any process for, for these kinds of decisions to be overseen in a system of checks and balances.